Mortar shells have been fired at Damascus University, killing at least 15 people and wounding another 20, according to Syria's state television. The government blames rebels for the attack, which comes amid intensified fighting between the army and the opposition around the capital. Journalist Abdullah Mawazini is joining me live now from Damascus. Abdullah, what else do you know about this attack? Uh, this attack comes on a series of attacks of murder that have been uh, shelling all around Syria, all around Damascus city. They are uh, uh, targeting heavily crowded areas in Damascus. We have one next to the main garden in Damascus. We have one close to a mosque, and we have two, uh, two, two uh, mortars in Damascus University. And this one is the uh, university, it's the Faculty of Architecture, and it killed 15, and there was 20 wounded. And this uh, massacre also happened with, uh, with another one that happened yesterday also, with the uh, shelling of uh, SANA, uh, which is the state news agency, and we have also a hospital that was shelled, and we have m many institutions that was shelled. It's a kind of a group of shelling of mortars all around Damascus in order to, to spread fear among the citizens of Damascus. So we're seeing increasing violence now in the capital city and also understand more violence in the suburbs itself. Tell us more about what's happening just outside of the city. Outside the city, there are, uh, we can divide the suburb of Damascus into two separate areas. One area is completely safe, everything is uh, going on uh, normally. And we have uh, one area called Daria, where we have a big fighting going on for, for the last three months now. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy uh, arm and heavy battles going on. We have area that's going on from being calm to, to being on, on fire and then getting calm again. But uh, in the surrounding of Damascus, there are a lot of fighting going on on over time. The rebels seem to be making a lot of ground and it looks like they're going to get even more support now following the Arab League summit earlier this week. Yes, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, we have this uh, the resolution of the Arab summit, uh, the latest one, that allows every state, every Arab state, uh, to provide weapons to the to the rebels uh, separately without referring back to the to the Arab League and without making any decision or going back to uh, a need for a resolution from the Arab League or any other institution. And this means that the uh, the rebels will get more weapons from uh, Arab states like Qatar and like Saudi Arabia. They used to give weapons, but now now they have a kind of legitimate cover in order to continue uh, su supporting this. Russia has uh, said clearly that that uh, this kind of act is not is not legal and it should not be continued and it's going to increase the bloodshed of uh, bloodshed in Syria. And that's very much a message coming from various countries who are criticizing the fact that the Arab League is supporting the rebels. Not least, of course, coming from Moscow, from the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, he's regretted the move, saying that military backing to the rebels is both unlawful and encourages more bloodshed. This is what he had to say. We believe that the Arab League has refused a peaceful settlement for Syria. The decision that the national coalition is the only legitimate representative of the Syrian people, of course, crosses all the efforts that have been made so far. It looks like Syria's future is something that's being determined outside Syria, at the meetings between foreign countries and the external opposition. While the opinion of those who think that the government and internal opposition also carries weight is totally ignored. Yes. Of course, now we have people, uh, we, we should, in order to have a solution, we should have a solution from inside Syria, not from outside Syria. And this, everyone in Damascus believe that, that it, this, is, this is the only way for solution. If you are depending on outside only, you, should, you could not find a solution, permanent solution, because there are many powers that are interfering in this. Abdullah, thank you very much indeed for that update. Abdullah Mawazani, live there in Syria. Thank you.